Hello everyone, welcome to all of you in my YouTube channel. Uh, today uh, is the lecture number three. Today is the lecture number three of the rotational dynamics. We are actually doing the rotational dynamics. Rotational dynamics class 12 physics. Okay, so uh, in the previous two lectures, basically we uh, have gone through the basics of the rigid body, the basics of the moment of inertia and about the torque. We established the relation between moment of inertia and the torque. Similarly, we also derived the relation of the angular momentum, its relation with the moment of inertia and so on. So, uh, uh, basically in this uh, uh, particular uh, lecture, I will continue, uh, I will continue with the, uh, the topic that is, okay, relation between, so uh, now we are going to uh, discuss about the con relation between angular momentum and the torque. So uh, basically, we have like uh, uh, in case of the in case of the angular momentum, we have the relation I is equal to L is equal to I times omega. Okay, we have the relation L is equal to I times omega. So if we differentiate it, if we differentiate it, we will get T L by D T is equal to I. I is the constant, so it does not vary with the time. So D omega. Okay. I. So th this become dl over dt is equal to i times alpha. Let us write this as equation one. Also, also uh, we have the relation of the torque in which tor tau is equal to i alpha. So this take this as equation number two. Now if we equate, if, if we equate this relation, equate one and two, the left hand side, the right hand side of both the equation remains same okay right hand side so it implies that the left hand side should also equal so tau equal to what comes dl over dt so this is the relation between the torque and the uh, angular momentum so now i just move to another topic and this that is principle of conservation principle of conservation of angular momentum principle of conservation of angular momentum likewise we studied uh, in case of the um, principle of conservation of linear momentum there actually we studied that um, uh, the total linear momentum of the system remain constant for the isolated system it implies that if there is no any kind of the external forces the total linear momentum remains same so similarly here also uh, in absence of the torque basically forces means in case of the uh, rotational motion the force refers to the torque so that's why in absence of uh, its statement can be written as uh, in absence of in absence of external torque in absence of external torque okay the total in absence of external torque the total um, angular momentum of the system the total angular momentum the total angular momentum of the system total angular momentum of the system remains what same remains same so it just implies that l is equal to constant it just said that l equal to constant l means we have the relation i omega i omega is equal to what i omega is equal to constant so uh, we can prove this also how actually we can prove is that as we have like we have the relation like torque tau is equal to dl over dt okay in the absence of you know torque if there is no we have written that in the absence of external torque so it implies that tau equal to 0 if tau equal to 0 then dl over dt equal to 0 it will be possible the derivative of l is equal to 0 means that l should be what constant 
okay here should be constant so that's why we have that relation uh, i omega is equal to constant or el is equal to constant uh, or mathematically in in case of the numerical also that relation comes very frequently so uh, yeah i omega is equal to constant means that i1 omega 1 is equal to i2 omega 2 because the product of the moment of inertia and the angular velocity remains constant so there are many examples actually there are many examples examples of this like the very famous example is the ballet dancer ballet dancer okay here actually you you just have to remember that in case of the dancer when the dancer stretches her hands stretches her hands the moment of inertia uh, increases by which the angular velocity decreases for example like uh, there is one one dancer if she stretches her hands the distance r will be increased okay this distance r will be increased that's why moment of inertia i is equal to mr square so as the r is large uh, the moment of inertia will be large and by the relation i omega should be constant if i is large if the moment of inertia is large the angular velocity uh, should be smaller okay uh, so similarly when the ballet dancer uh, you know uh, like uh, um, uh, do not stretch the hand or bend the hand in that case the r will be small r will be small you know if r is small moment of inertia is small i if moment of inertia is small the uh, angular velocity will be what large okay in this case angular velocity will be large so this is one example and there are actually many examples but you just have to keep in mind that you you always have to focus on the two factors about of one of the moment of inertia and other another of the angular velocity if moment of inertia is large how the moment of inertia can be large how the moment of inertia can be large by the two relation okay let's see i into omega is equal to constant moment of inertia means mr square it means that if mass increases i also increases if r increases r means distance from axis of rotation increases i will be also increases so it implies that moment of inertia actually depends on the two terms that is mass and the distance from axis of rotation similarly this is the angular velocity okay this is the angular velocity so um, these two have i uh, a kind of the inverse type of the relationship you just have to keep in mind whenever there is large moment of inertia the velocity the angular velocity of the rotation will be decreases but whenever ang uh, moment of inertia is small the angular velocity will be large so keep in keep it in, uh, in your mind and uh, uh, explore the other examples uh, which are given in the textbook also you can explore other examples also so uh, now i just move to another topic and that is the kinetic energy kinetic energy of rotation kinetic energy of rotation so basically what is the kinetic energy of rotation in general we we, we actually have you know kinetic energy is equal to 1 by 2 mv square okay so but that is the relation in case of the translational motion then what about the rotational motion what about the uh, what about the angular motion okay suppose uh, we have uh, any any uh, rigid body so uh, you have gone through such figures many times so suppose that this body rotating about this with the angular velocity omega suppose this is the mass m1 and this is the distance from axis of rotation similarly this is mass m2 m3 likewise there can be many particles okay likewise there can be many particles of the different masses so uh, basically in this case uh, first uh, first we will find uh, for mass m1 okay for mass m1 i i do not go to the detail uh, okay, I do not uh, go to the language part, but if you want, you can just write that in a one paragraph that uh, take a body which has n number of particles having the masses m1, m2, m3, dot, 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 mn, which are at the distance of r1, r2, r3, dot, 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 rn from the axis of rotation. This body is rotating about the axis of rotation with the angular velocity omega and like that. So for the mass m1, let's, let, uh, let us I find the kinetic energy 1 is equal to m1 v1 square 
so we have one relation the relation is that v equal to omega r okay so use use it here 1 by 2 m1 v1 means omega r1 square i just write omega only not omega 1 because the omega the angular velocity remains same so here what i get 1 by 2 m1 r1 square omega r so this is the kinetic energy of the first particle this is the kinetic energy of the particle whose mass is m1 so similarly so similarly likewise the kinetic energy for the another mass will be like 1 by 2 m2 r2 square omega similarly for the nth particle kinetic energy for the nth particle will be 1 by 2 m n r n square times omega then the total k what will be the total kinetic energy the total kinetic energy will be like you know uh, it is the, it is just be the sum of the kinetic energies ke1 ke2 and dot 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 plus ken okay we just add that add the kinetic energy so ke is equal to 1 by 2 m1 r1 square omega so 1 by 2 m2 r2 square omega plus dot dot dot, dot plus 1 by 2 m uh, mn so the nth particle we can just write that m n r n square omega okay so kinetic energy if we take the common to our side and uh, the remaining terms will be m1 r1 square m2 r2 square plus dot dot dot, dot plus m n r n square and uh, omega so this can be this can just be written as like you know this can just be written as like in the form of summation summation i range from 1 to n and m i r i square because if we uh, expand if we expand this summation we will get the same result so this will be like ke is equal to 1 by 2 i omega square so this is the relation of the kinetic energy this is the relation of the kinetic energy when the body is in rotation motion okay in the in the rotational motion so uh, for for the case of the rolling body let us let us derive the uh, kinetic energy for the rolling body also kinetic energy of rolling body okay let us derive the kinetic energy of the rolling body in case of the rolling body there is both type of the effects like there is the translational motion also because uh, while the any body is rolling it covers some distance also as well as there is the rotation also so uh, what actually we can write is that kinetic energy of rolling is equal to basically kinetic energy of translation okay translational kinetic energy plus another one is the kinetic energy of what rotation basically there are two kinetic energies so uh, kinetic energy of translation means we generally have 1 by 2 mv square and kinetic energy of rotation means 1 by 2 i omega square okay so this is the kinetic this is the total kinetic energy of the rolling body what whatsoever what we can call here okay so uh, here also uh, we can find actually various relation uh, rolling i just write roll over here to just to know that it is the uh, kinetic energy of ruling body so 1 by 2 m v in place of the v actually we can uh, uh, just write mv square and 1 by 2 in place of i we can just write mk square because uh, the k is the uh, radius of gyration and we also have the relation like v equal to omega r from this omega equal to what v by r so that's why this will be v square by uh, v square by what r square so uh, the kinetic energy of rolling body okay kinetic energy of rolling body should be like 1 by 2 mv square and 1 plus this will be like k square by r square so this is the kinetic energy of the rolling body so uh, this uh, this energy can be basically can be uh, used in case of the some numericals also uh, so on the basis of on the depends on the conditions of the numerical uh, we can actually find uh, the kinetic energy of rolling body so uh, thank you very much uh, this much for today and in upcoming uh, lectures i will continue the uh, the other contents and i am planning to cover um, uh, all the contents uh, strictly based on the syllabus along with the discussion on the conceptual questions and the numerical questions so uh, thank you very much